This Three Beards Media podcast may contain mature themes and may not be suitable for all audiences. another episode of in the side of the storm i'm dave larson where we talk all things cyclones and i'm here with my storm teammates partners in crime marcus spicer and brent curvey how are you guys doing good doing good how about you i'm doing good how about you brent no well i do have some complaints but none that i'll share on (laughs) (laughs) no i'm good man i'm good this is a big monday you know this is a big day we we got a lot to talk about. We've got KU follow up. We've got women who played today. We've got the men who are on right now. We've got our guy, Brees Hall, Al Lazard, who are playing right now on Monday Night Football. There's a lot to get to. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk Kansas football game. Did you guys watch it? I was there. You were on the sidelines, weren't you, Brent? I was there. Not on the sidelines. I don't get I don't get Brock Purdy treatment or Joe <laughs> Lane treatment. I'm, I'll be in the stands. However, I was there. Uh, man, it just uh the rest took control of the first half, in my opinion. Um, and that just made it tough to overcome, man. We kind of struggled a little bit and it's just tough to be there. But that second half we felt like we came alive and things were working in our favor, but just couldn't, you know. Find a dub at the end of it all. What about you, Marcus? What'd you see? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. I, you know, I sometimes I, I let my emotions get the best of me and, and start live tweeting, but I mean, some of it is just <laughs> egregious as hell. You yeah. know, he, we even got one troll that, you know, got one follower on Twitter telling me to stick to basketball like that got anything to do with being a football fan, but, you right. know. That's neither here nor there, but um, there definitely <laughs> were a, a, a handful of calls there that was, uh, you know, crazy. And, you know, t- to all of us feel like, you know, that, that definitely changed the uh, dynamic of the game. So, you know, coming out in the second half, we fought. You know, the guys played extremely well in the second half, as, as they tended to do. We always, you know, get that one, one touchdown, you know, one and a half. Uh, touchdowns back six to nine points, 10 points behind, and we're trying to claw our way back. But, you know, we were very proud that at the effort that they gave in the second half. It, it would have been nice to get that one. Um, Kansas has come a long way as a football team, and, you know, yeah. and we definitely know what that feels like. And um, but like I said, we, we definitely would have loved to have, have had that one. Well, I think our little troll needs to hop on because I don't think they understand the passion that you have for football. Similarly, the passion that Brent has for basketball, mm-hmm. they really need to start listening to this program. They need to, yeah. but, you know, dumb thugs, man. We don't pay them no mind. <laughs> yeah, and, and, Brent, I, I was like you. I was in the stands watching uh, while my kid was had a shirt off in the end zone, the student section, <laughs> watching the game. But there really seemed to be three plays that stuck out to me. There was the, the pick six. That that really hurt. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it really seemed to be that the re- receiver miscommunication with uh, Rocco. Um, of course, the kick return that was not out of bounds. That I, I get why the play was called, or I, I get that the play had to be stopped at that point at the thirty-one yard line. It was just an awful call to make. It was the right. wrong call to make. Um, yeah. So I get that. 
and then Kansas just seemed to make all the right moves. Uh, we get within three, Juicy Wiggles playing, the crowd's going wild, and mm-hmm. then we see the 80, the 80-yard 80 touchdown. Um, yeah. Touchdown pass that they made. We yeah. come down, uh, if memory serves me, then we score a field goal, feel pretty good. The yeah. defense had a, a chance. We had them a third and I think four, third and three, and Kansas – made a first down pass we at that point we could have had the ball back with about three minutes left it felt pretty good about that then Kansas gets another first down with that little jump pass uh that yeah. was made and, and that really was the end of the game but I agree we we just stumbled and bubbled our way in that first half had a shot in the second half I really wish we could have pulled it out yeah, I mean the other play that you, I think uh, either you or or shit or somebody pointed out here uh, about that fumble, the one they snatched away from um, was it thirty two or was it a running yeah. back or something like that? But they didn't call it; they called it down. But they were allowing them to run for you know fifteen twenty seconds after the pile got together. So it's one of those you didn't hear the whistle, and we came out with the ball, and it's like, oh no no no, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead. <laughs> That was the that was the worst game. That was the worst home officiating I've seen in a long time because we didn't get hardly any calls. And yeah, you have probably, a little history with taking the ball and running the other way with it, don't you? <laughs> against Kansas, against Kansas for sure. But They're not hearing the whistle though, <laughs> right? Yeah, man, that that was kind of a little shady, man. I thought we'd get a couple of calls our way, man, but they just I mean, yeah. take it. And Kansas played well, you know, back. Kansas. Marcus, you're right. Kansas has come a long way in the last two years. They yeah. they they earned it. They played well. They made the plays when they had to. Um, we were just on the wrong end of some of those plays. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So up next, BYU, we play them. It's at Provo, Utah, in the middle of the night for us. Marcus, just perfect timing for you. <laughs> Have you decided? Are you going up for the game? I know it's only nine hours. <laughs> so I haven't decided yet. Um, we we're gonna see what happens. I, I got some engagements that I prior engagements I may have to attend this weekend, but we'll see how that works out. It, it is a nice drive. It is it's it's probably it's probably a, a good five and a half six, which isn't bad. But you know, uh, anything past four now, you you know the kids get to get a little unruly and things like that. So we, we'll see. I understand. I remember those days. <laughs> so, what do you – tough game against Kansas. I think we're all a little bit disappointed. What do you guys anticipate seeing against BYU? Again, it's a late uh, kickoff, 9-15, our time. Brent, what do you think you're going to – how do you think uh, the game's going to shape up? I think they'll, you know, build a momentum that they created in the second half of that Kansas game. Uh, well, I'm hoping so at any rate, and, and walk away with it. It seems like BYU has struggled so far. Just from scores I've seen, I haven't really had a chance to really watch them as much this year, but it doesn't look like they'll be too big of a challenge. You know, you're playing on somebody else's home field, so that's always, uh, you know, a possible issue. But, um, you know, I think defense has been playing well um, outside of a couple of miscues. I mean, they, you know, Kansas took advantage of us early, but – I just don't see BYU having that sort of success against us uh, next week. I like some of the defensive pressure we put on Kansas in the second half. We, you know, uh, coach really seemed to take his shots when he could and and, and made them uncomfortable. Again, Kansas made some good moves um, and they ultimately made some plays, but I like our chances against BYU. I, I'm curious if Slovis is going to pay. Is it Slovis? Quarterback for BYU, I think he's been out the last couple of games. I'll be curious to see if he oh, yeah, if this yeah. is a return or not. Yeah, even so. I trust Haycock in his plan. <laughs> Regardless, I think we'll have the, have the boys ready to go, no matter what. Have them keyed in on whoever it is. And I think they'll take care of business, man. It should be a, a good good sound win for us. Well, we need it. Again, We one, one more game to be bowl eligible. I'd really, really like to see us make that. Absolutely. Marcus, what do you think? Uh, how do you think this, this game is going to turn out on Saturday? Well, I, I hadn't seen, I hadn't seen BYU play all all season, so I, I really don't know. Um, 
you know, I, I definitely go into every game being biased. <laughs> so uh, I just have the that's feeling that's what the show's that, about. Don't don't apologize. Yeah. That's what the show's about. I just have the feeling that you know our, our guys are going to play tough. I, I I'm not a fan of blowout games. I like seeing good competitive games, but ultimately a W at the end. So I, I really don't know. You know, um, like I said, I hadn't seen BYU play at all this season. So. Maybe I'll look at look them up, you know, at the we're all for sometime this week to see if I see some highlights and stuff, see how see what they're working with. But you know, ultimately we need this win, like you said, to be bowl eligible. And um, I know the guys are, are gonna be hungry to come out and get that. Yeah, I agree. The only thing I'm worried about is the time difference and the playing so late. You know, that's you get into that rhythm of playing at eleven and you get into that rhythm. So when you change it to a six o'clock game, that's a different rhythm. And now you yeah. go to a a late game like this, that has me a little bit concerned, plus the travel going west. Did you guys ever have situations like that where you had to uh, play west coast, far east coast, and your clocks were all off? How did you uh, adapt to that? Oh, well, I mean, wow. just, course, you course. know, just. What's that, Brett? It's my bad. I didn't mean to cut you off, Mark. You go, you go, um, go ahead. I know, I was just saying, I, I mean, Colorado was probably the furthest that we had went and played, uh, just kind of playing in that, you know, thin air and just feeling, you know, all of that, I guess, kind of lightheaded feeling, I guess, more or less, and, and heavy breathing and all of that good stuff, man. But, I mean, outside of that, um, that that's the only place that I personally can think of in, in my collegiate career. We went out west and played that may have had any sort of impact on us. Marcus, you're yep. flying all over the country, right? Yeah, we went to um to the Great Alaska shootout one year, and then the next year we went we went to Hawaii. But uh when we were in Hawaii, we were there for about two weeks. So the first week, you know, we were there just practicing and you know, had the had the chance to try to get, you know, some of that jet lag recovered. Um, so by the time we start playing, it wasn't as bad as it was when we first got there. But, uh, the year before when we were in Alaska, like I was thinking that the other day, I, I don't remember anything about that, you know, tournament trip. Cause it was just practice sleep, <laughs> trying to go out and play, trying to win the tournament and get back to Ames. And that was it. That was it. They didn't give you any beach time. Any what? Hawaii. Oh uh, yeah, we time? we I I don't mess with the beach too much, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's a known fact to me that sharks live there, and people, people, <laughs> people tend to laugh about that. But uh, yeah. there was a couple of teams that was out there, uh, specifically uh, the University of Rhode Island was out there in that tournament, and um, and the coaches, one of the coaches' wife got bit, not severely, but got bit in the in the buttocks by a shark. And I just remember thinking to myself, that's going to be a long flight home, you know, <laughs> with that, with that bite mark. But, uh, we, we all went, we, we all went snorkeling or attempted to go snorkeling. Um, Martin ran it. Martin was, I mean, Martin looked like he was miles, miles out there with this, with his flippers and this, and this snorkel on and stuff. And, <laughs> and so I got there, I got late, I got there late because I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. So um, all of the the whatever the flippers or whatever things, whatever they're called, they were gone. And I was just I was just out there in some in some old shoes that I had. And so I had my snorkel, the snorkel and, and the goggles and, there and everything. And you know the water was like to my stomach, to my chest, and uh, you know clear blue water. I mean, for as far as your eyes can see. So I had my goggles on. I put my head down in the water. Man, there was so many funny looking fish going all in between your legs. And, and so, like when I got up out of the water, you couldn't see nothing. I said, okay, I, I think I'm hallucinating. And so I did it again. Man, it was fish. Every, I said, oh no. So if, if it's a shark out there, it's the same thing. I can't see anything. I said, nah, y'all can have this. And I literally took, <laughs> took that equipment back and I was done. And like I said, I was sitting, I was sitting on the beach and you know the guys was out there playing in the water. I mean, I, I just remember Martin Rancid being so far out there, and I was just praying, man, don't let nothing grab him out there. Because if he, I mean, if, if if it did, 
then what are we gonna do? So right. I don't I don't mess with the beach. I don't mess with with the oceans like like that because like I said, sharks do live there. Yeah, and some other things. We're in too. their home. Yeah, for <laughs> real. <laughs> well, it sounds like a good investment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so men's basketball. Have you uh, have you been able to catch the first half of the game that's on right now? No, one of my um, one of my uh, kids uh, from our AAU program is that plays at uh, Utah Valley State. He's playing right now and, and currently on on the TV screen. And so, like Marcus Junior. sent me a text because he wanted the Hulu password. That <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> he said that uh, our kid uh, Osiris Grady, um, six eight. Uh, power forward is playing right now. So wanted to watch some of him, see how he's doing. It is their first game of the year. So I, I, I got the Cyclones on recording, and I'm recording him as well. So I keep on looking over to see how he's doing uh, his first go. game. But I hadn't, hadn't had a chance to peek yet. This is, like you said, so many things is going on tonight. You know, uh, Monday, Monday Night Football is being recorded, all of that. So I get all right, to it. So I'm not going to give you any insight then to spoil the moment, but – a, you're gonna like it. Um, we'll just keep it at that. You're gonna like what's going on, and and it, when you have a chance, check out the Green Bay coach's jacket. I'm telling you, it's elite. It's an elite sport coat that he's wearing tonight. <laughs> I've seen some elite coats, you know, with Craig Sager. <laughs> Craig, he, Craig he brought yeah. some elite coats out. He did. It's uh, probably a little bit closer to some of the old 1970s Bob Knight editions. Uh, with a green and white plaid, hmm. but it, it looks very sharp. Hmm. So, did anybody get online to purchase their uh 12 by 12 piece of Hilton floor that went on sale this morning by the athletics department? No, they better be sending me one to my mailbox. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> they're, they're selling 300 of these, and there was such high demand that the website crashed. They're selling them between 50 and 100 bucks per 12 by 12 slab. And there's a QR code that tells you about on the floor where, where that piece came from. Uh, but yeah, apparently it, it crashed this morning. They're going to have to redo it at some point down the road. That's how the demand is for uh, a piece of Hilton Coliseum. Didn't they just do something like that like a year or two ago? I think our our comrade in arms, uh, Chris Shipley, has a couple of pieces of Hilton Coliseum's floor. I, I do. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll bring it up on a tweet. I I tweeted out a couple of photos. Yeah, you're just going to show it off now, aren't you? I am. You bought yeah. it today, or is this? No, these are these are from 2012. To, it's the floor from 2012 to 2018, I think. Okay. Uh, so. So, what floor did they sell today? Uh, the one from 2019 till last year. This is a new floor, I think. Damn! Every floor, they just getting a new floor every couple of years. Right. What? Right. what like, why are they? Money are they... all over the place. But shit, money all over the I know why. <laughs> There's money to be made, so they don't. That's right. Money to be made. That's right. And we all know Jamie Pollard knows how to make money. Yeah. yeah. Nothing short of that. So Sorry, while Chris it. is Go doing ahead. that, pulling up his uh, his version of the floor from several years back, uh, another Cyclone Noons, uh, Dedrick Willoughby, is being honored at the November 12th game. So I think that's this upcoming weekend against Idaho State. Not quite certain what they're going to be doing in recognition of, of uh, Dedrick, but uh, I think that's a pretty cool thing that they're able to do. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a sad time. Um, you know, looking on Facebook, and I think I think Sean Bankhead is the one that posted it. Um, when he passed away, and you know, I was just completely blown away. And um, Sean gave me a call right then, and we spoke on the phone, you know, about 10 15 minutes about you know the whole deal and everything like that. And you know, pretty devastating for you know Cyclone Nation and you know the ones who were his teammates and, and for us that came up, you know, wanted to be like him. So that's definitely great for them to be able to honor him. Yeah, he was uh, he was a true legend. You know, I remember him playing, and you know, he was one that 
would break ankles. He just he just had this force about him, and when he needed someone to score, he was a scorer. Yeah, and he's from Louisiana, so you know that whole Louisiana connection coming up behind him. Um, you know, wanted to be a cyclone because, like I said, that team, him, Sean Bay King, Kevin Cato, um, you know, that team right there, Kenny Pratt, really made me want it to be a cyclone. And, um, you know, to, to, to lose him so early in life is, is definitely tragic. Did, did, did the fan come with his shit? No. <laughs> no. It's just this is my side table, and then I have this one ah. uh, uh, out front. Keep all my remotes on, things like that. So, but yeah, I scored those from a from a friend of mine that that had a hookup from Lindsay Fennelly. So, I do have a small piece, I do have a, a, a fairly decent sized piece left that I could probably allocate somewhere. Yeah, I wonder what happened to that, you know, 99, 2000-ish floor. <laughs> somebody is probably playing on it right now. That's, That's right. before Pollard got there, so you know somebody got that. So tonight being the first game of the season for the men and the women, Brett and Marcus, uh, do you remember your first game playing for Iowa State? And what what were you, what were what was going through your emotions? What were you feeling? For your first game, uh, yeah, I remember my first game. I mean, I think I played. I mean, I didn't really. I feel like the game I remember most was my first start, and that was against Oklahoma, and they were like number one in the nation. And Jason White won the Heisman that year, and yeah, I was a true freshman, and you know, them and their whole old line went to the NFL, and. You know, I was about 260 just getting tossed around like a rag dog, but I was all <laughs> over the place, you know, so <laughs> making plays and you know, that's something that kind of stuck with me. Um, but no nerves. I was just like, this is what I wanted to come to school and do. I was looking forward to my opportunity to kind of put myself out there. So um, I just knew that was a, you know, a great first showing for me. You know, And, and it was on TV. It was TBS at the time. So, you know. Not a ton of viewership, but at least everybody back at home got to see me play. So that meant, you know, that meant everything to me. So I knew I had to show out because I knew too many eyes would be on me. But. So last week we learned from Keith Sims how he was told that he was going to start for his first game. How how were you told that you were going to be the starter against Oklahoma? Uh, I mean, I was rotating in. Um, Jordan Carstens was a senior uh, when I was a freshman, and he – tore his ACL the game before uh, against Northern Illinois. So I was already rotating a lot. So I played a lot as it was as a true freshman. But uh, once he went down, I was next in line. So it was one of those that kind of knew. It, weren't, it wasn't a, hey, you got the job. It's a, you better figure it out, kid. Let's let's spend another hour after practice, hour before practice doing walkthroughs and making sure you don't forget your job and just run around there like a chicken with his head cut off. But yeah, they just – I was rotating in enough, and, you know, they just kind of trusted me with the job, so. And Carson spent some time in the NFL. He was a good ball player as well. Yeah, went to the – the irony of it is kind of felt bad after. You know, I came to Iowa State as a freshman behind Jordan. My first year in the NFL, I went to Carolina. When I got there, Jordan got let go because he had a um, – oh, he had a – I don't know if it's a blood clot or something, some sort of other uh, injury, or I'm sorry, it was a non-football related injury, but it was pretty much career ending. So it was something with his lungs, or he had a blood clot or something, but he ended up having to leave my first year there as well. So it's like, damn, I feel like I'm a, I'm a cancer to you almost, man. I felt bad for him, but, uh, you know, got to follow that guy's footsteps, and I learned a ton from Jordan in the process, so. What about you, Marcus? Do you remember your first game? Uh, no, not at all. I <laughs> man, that's that was over twenty years ago. I, I literally, literally was just trying to go through my brain's rolodex. I do not recall uh, who it was at all. I mean, I, I know, you know, Tim Floyd was the coach my freshman year, and 
man, what he was putting us through in practice, whoever was definitely got the work, but it, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I mean, my, my freshman year was, my freshman year was tough. You know, I was, I was uh, talking to a good friend of mine uh, a couple of days ago, uh, Chad Parr. And me and Chad was talking about. Uh, I was. He sent. He sent a picture with him and uh, Clay. Uh, Clay Edwards and uh, Tony Rampton. And I was like, man, those guys' elbows. <laughs> man was was breaking me in my freshman year uh, wow. when I came in. I said, you know, I came in, thought I knew everything and was just going to dominate. And they really gave me a rude awakening. So, you know, we we don't have training camp, but you know, training before the season started and all that. Like it was. It was school practice weights, school practice weights, you know, and and that's that's about it. So a lot of that was a blur pretty much until um, we got to the Big Twelve, and then you know things kind of slowed down. Now you can plan, you know, what game, what team to look forward to, and everything like that. But early on, no, I I do not remember, do not recall stats and none like that. The first game, I. Now you're gonna have me thinking for a while trying to figure it out. <laughs> I'll probably break down and try to get I'm on looking. Google. Yeah, you know, we're gonna get, off this. <laughs> get off of this. You're gonna email and text everybody. I, hey, man. I remember now. But you gonna, said this I, before, right? I remember. You said that practices were so tough that the that games were almost easier because right. practices were so difficult and challenging, and they made you work so hard. Absolutely. I mean, you know. Along with all of that, it was fun too, though. But it it was it was challenging, and it it it, it did bring out the best of us. But the bottom line, it, it made us closer closer and kept us out of the streets from doing anything that we probably didn't have any business doing. I mean, we were we were student athletes, so first and foremost, to be there to you know get an education and then play sports. Um, fortunate enough to do that, but. Man, we were trying to get me, me and my roommate Paris Corner. We were we were trying to get rest, man. That's the only thing we were focused on getting that rest. <laughs> well, have you guys been paying attention to the NBA now? That's kicked off as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've definitely picked that like a little bit. Tyrese Halliburton's off to a hot start. I see he's got. Uh, I think the other night he scored forty three points, twelve uh, assists. I think the his first five games of the year were triple double, forty three points as a career record for him as well, and in the most of any Cyclone while well, setting his own record in the NBA. Pretty impressive start to the season for him. Oh, what is that? I think Brent's doing some laundry or something. My son was uh, <laughs> my son was getting me some ice so I can refill my beverage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you give me that relative. I said 1997. 97. We lost. We lost to you and I. You and I. University of Northern Iowa. Yep. That was my first game, my freshman year. November 23rd, 1997. Here we are. That was in you and I. Right. Uh, Correct? Uh, yes, I think so. Yep. But that, no, uh, would you play at the Hilton. Unidome at that point? No, it was at Hilton. It was at Hilton? Okay. Yeah, your first five games were at Hilton. Your first road game was Drake at Nap, and you lost that game, too. Damn. Yeah, my, my first well, year. We, well, it was we, working out too hard. <laughs> don't, I don't, I, I don't remember, I don't remember that you and I game, that first one. Well, now we know why. Hmm. I mean, no, I'm, like I'm, I mean, I, I remember, I remember that Drake guy. I, I remember losing to Drake because I remember, you know, like you know, this this team shouldn't be, you know, beating us, <laughs> but we lost. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, losing, and beating Drake and Drake has always been tough, you know, just because of the, you know, the, the closeness of everything of the two universities, but. Okay, okay. Now the first game I do remember was the UT Arlington game. I thought that I thought for, for whatever reason that was the first game. But I don't I don't remember that, that Northern Iowa game. Click click on the 
Oh, well, I guess. So you probably have PTSD. <laughs> from from what? You you also lost to Iowa that year, Marcus, by one. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't beat Iowa, Iowa to, to my Jeez. to my junior year. We lost to Detroit oh. Mercy. <laughs> he's like this this whole fresh he's like this whole freshman yeah we can just just exit from the memory that i mean that I you know that was me you know just coming in just thinking I, i'm here i have arrived and it's just you know that collegiate level is 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 such a higher level than what people think and assume and yes. you know we got more players and stuff in you know and the next year we got a little bit better and then Ultimately, you know, Jamal Tinsley and Contrell Horton came in and, you know, we ran with it after that. But, you know, it, I was the first struggle years after, you know, that big eight team, that big eight championship team had left. So, you know, that's a part of it. Man, that shit, we went 2-10 and my freshman year, so I get it. We were terrible. Yeah, I think we finished, what, shit, 12 and 15 that year? 12 and – yeah, because I remember Kenny Pratt giving me giving me hell about you know having a losing record, um, and then then I told him I said, "Yeah, LG, we gonna, I'm gonna change that you know in the next couple of years." So, no, we weren't good at all my freshman year. Twelve and eighteen. Twelve and eighteen out. Yeah, Did I say 12, 15, 12 and eighteen. And you gave me three more losses. <laughs> Just a plethora of good news. Hey, Ship, do you have the uh, NBA in-season uh, courts? Yeah, you sent them to me. I'll bring them up here. Give me a give me All right, a so The tournament yeah, Marcus, courts? Yeah, have you seen these new courts that the NBA yeah. is displaying for the – First, can you – can anyone explain the in-season tournament, how that works? Well, I mean, it's – in, in all of the pro leagues, and especially in the Euro League and different ACB, in Spain and things like that, they always have these in-season like tournament, or they call them cups. They call them cups. They it, pr- it pretty much seems like before, you know, the conference uh, or you know the pool play for the championship really start. There's a cup every other weekend, and some somebody handed somebody a trophy for something, or something like that. So they call them cups. So uh, with everything international, with you know the NBA, what they're trying to do, expand and and broaden the horizons and everything with that, the borders and everything with that, I, you know they're trying to pick up the same, you know, intensity of of having that kind of play in the, in the NBA. So it's just it's just an in season tournament. I mean, it. I think they came up with the idea last season, so it's fresh on everyone. Um, so how to fit it in during the season and things like that, they have to try to figure that out. And so I guess they came up with the courts to identify that those are the tournament, uh, the tournament games. And whoever gets to the end of this, you know, bracket of tournament or whatever, they, you know, win, I guess, a half a million dollar prize, which, which is a good prize because they're making billions off the tournament. So you might as well get the, give the players you know, half a million dollars for, for participating in it, considering it is a player's league. So we're yeah. still trying to figure out, you know, what games are what. You got to look on the schedule and find out, you know, which are, are going to be considered the tournament games, and you just go from there. Brent, what do you think of these courts that they've got displayed? I think uh, I mean, Chip's going to show the first one, which is Houston. It's kind of dope. It's almost like the NFL when they do their color rush stuff. I, I mean, I like it. It's a change. There's the greatest there. team ever, the Lakers. Sorry. He said the greatest team ever. I mean, I like it, man. It's a change up. You know what I'm saying? I like the breakup of the monotony, man. And um, I wonder, you know, I don't know, maybe Marcus, you can chime in, but does, does that throw you off? Like the the loud, bright colors, does that mess you up at all when you're playing? Well, not, not to me. Um, you know, I, I got a lot of people questioning and asking about uh, the Bulls, obviously. Then then too many people ask anything about the Bucks because their, theirs were, were more subtle. You know, all, all we had is, oh, the, is the green on the inside of there, but us for, for the Bulls was, you know, the whole court was red. But I, I kind of liked it. Um, yeah. 
you know, where where Marcus where Marcus Jr. is playing like now down in Phoenix is a place called the facility. And um they their courts are black, you know, so it was it, it was a different spin. Um total court is black, you know, the kids love that different flair. You know, mm-hmm. you, you you're gonna have people that's gonna have opinion one way or the other. I mean, when you're a pro at that level, it really don't matter. I mean, you can take the nets yeah. off the basket, we still gonna shoot in it. So right. it really doesn't matter. But uh, yeah. to me, I, I I liked it. I mean, I liked each and every one of the floors. I I personally felt like you know, our floor in Milwaukee was was kind of bland. I was like, damn, that's all they're giving us is, is the the green strip down the middle. But, yeah. You know, to, to considering you know what we had in Chicago. You know how that was read, and then Miami. I think Miami court was. I I, I thought Miami was, was going to pop a little bit better, but it was more of a blander red. You know, so yeah, you know, I, I like it. Denver's court was. I think it was it was really really blue. Oh yeah, I didn't even see I that one. That. I didn't even I like see that, that one. one. That's cool. Why, why are the colors? Why are, that's Houston? Why where, where's the blue come from? Uh, that was you know that was the Elijah one days. Oh, okay. Um, with Steve uh, Francis and all of them, they had the the blue on the jerseys then. Hey, oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I, I guess we. I never Franchise, wore Charles Barkley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't see that one. Together, Brent, did you ever play in Boise on that blue turf? Yeah, I, I did not. Type. I did not. I did not play in Boise, but you know, because Mark is talking about playing on those black courts. I I think playing on that blue field would be awfully weird too. Yeah, ship ship. Uh, see see if you can Google the facility. It's spelled P H H, and I guess the rest facility like you 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 would spell facility. <laughs> <laughs> So the the P H H is is the F, and then facility is down in uh in, in Phoenix, Arizona, or Tempe. But it's it's a black it's a black court. Uh, they were like they the that. diamond doves, right? Is that what that's well, that's, what to me, right? Yeah, and, okay. and or or is the Phoenix uh, prep fire? So they got a they got a couple couple different uh, teams and stuff down there, but their court gotcha. is black like that. So yeah, you can pull that up and, and show. Yeah, so see, yeah, that's the Ooh. court. Oh, yeah. It's just really nice. It's really nice. I don't think it looks that good anymore. <laughs> that, that looks yeah. like when they first put the floor down, but, yeah, you know, I don't think they buffing it that well anymore. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's, it's cool. The kids love it. Um, you know, different flair, something different than what they played on, you know, before. So, oh, is that Another Charlotte? Bulls, that's your Bulls. That's no, the not not the, not the big one, the one down there bottom, below. Bottom right. Yeah, is that? Yeah. That's Hill yeah. Valley. Who's it? The is Sun? That, is that Phoenix? It's got to be. It's got to be. Boston's is pretty solid. Bo- Boston's going to always have just. It took the. Oh, that's trash. Yeah, that is just gave, they just gave them the core. <laughs> that's oh, that's pretty dope. That lavender, that lavender is not bad, huh? Is that that's the old Spurs? Spurs. Spurs. That's Spurs. a Spurs. That's a Spurs. Okay. Yep. I don't get the green on there. Mm. No, yeah, uh, and I do. Wrong. I think that other one was uh, was the Suns. It is. Yeah, I'll bring it back up. Yeah, you can see it says Suns over here. It's the valley. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see it. Yeah, see it. yeah. yeah. crazy. And I yeah, like the Warriors it's, it's court the other player. night. Look kind of clean. But it's it's doing what you know Adam Silver, you know, projected. We're talking about it. People are talking right. about it. You know, it's, it's about yeah, yeah. right. It's it's about the clicks and the likes and things like that, and, and getting traction of of people speaking about it, whether you like it or not. Who is that? Detroit. That's pretty solid. So, so the first the first games of this tournament, like everyone didn't have a home game, so we hadn't seen all of these courts yet, huh? Yeah, I think it, eventually they will all be yeah. played. What? Yeah. Several games during the mid during middle part of the season. Well, we're actually approaching it now. I think there was a game just the other night that the Pacers played in was their first in, in season game. But then immediately following, I think, is the regular season game. Right, right. And, 
I mean, it don't take much to put the courts down and take them up, you know. Yeah. And they usually do it every night out in Chicago. By the time we and then got they out, can turn around you know, and sell. They can cut it up and sell it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they they don't right, sell those as a, much. Let's, let's take a Revelton break here and hear a word from our sponsor, Revelton Distillery. At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family. From the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy, our 33-foot-tall custom-made still, right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn, and even the cows on those farms who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45-minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind-the-scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. All right, thank you to Revelton. Yeah, I've got I'm going back to the mold berry gin tonight. We've got some we had 70 degree weather here today, so mm-hmm. it feels more like spring than it does winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we had about 85, 86 today. It was real windy though. My sinuses are really kicking in with the dust. So this past week, uh longtime Indiana basketball coach Bob Knight died. Marcus, did you play against uh Coach Knight, when he was with Texas Tech? Yes, uh, when he was at Texas Tech. Um, but one of my Chicago Bull teammates, um, A.J. Guyton, played for him. And then my uh, AAU teammate in high school, um, Kyle Hornsby, who's um, a heart surgeon now. <laughs> but uh, hey, hey, we played dope. Yeah, we played AAU basketball together, so he played, played for him as well. So uh, definitely, you know, heartbreaking uh to lose such a legend um you know he's just that old school coaching where it's a little bit different now you know um but you know everyone who played for him you know no one is perfect either way you you know you want (coughs) to slice it but um if you had the mental fortitude and and the the desire to play for a coach like that you know i had two of them you know tim floyd definitely was that way and Larry say she was another level of that. So they both got the the most out of me. Um, I had Larry for two years, so he definitely got more. But you know that type of coaching, that that type of mentality, um, you know, really, really changes your life as as a a player and as a man. Um, but you know, things are like I said, things are a little bit different now in, in terms of what you're able to do and and in no way, shape or form did they do anything malicious or anything like that. You know, it's just was that hard nosed old school coaching. And, um, you know, we're getting away from that a little bit and you're starting to, it's starting to reflect, you know, down through the, through the different generations now. So, uh, definitely a sad time to lose, uh, coach Knight. So, you know, we're both, we're all three dads. Uh, we've had, we have kids that are, have been, uh, athletes growing up and playing for other coaches. Um, do you think that that style, there's still room for that style of coaching with today's athlete? Brent, what are your thoughts? No. And all the reason I say it is because, I mean, unfortunately, these kids are a lot softer, right? right? And not to be, you know, not to talk bad or any of that stuff, but you cannot That's talk to fact. these kids yeah. that way because – anything out of context or in their face it's an immediate shutdown and then it's an immediate social media post and it's an immediate attack on (laughs) the coach or you know any of the things that they do so personally i don't feel like they're not mentally tough enough and a lot of that Mm -hmm. stems from what they see on their phones all day um they're exposed to way too much way too fast and they they don't process things the way we did when we didn't have access to this information highway right so we knew what we saw and that was it like i'm sure marcus when you were you know when you were playing if you had a hard-nosed coach that's all you knew of what a coach was to be because you didn't see you know a million different you know versions of a coach right but now it's like 
you, you know, these kids say, oh, well, the coach is in my face. And guess what? Like, I've seen so many instances now where coaches are just like basically demanding respect from these kids and the kids are they got their phones out like this oh, yeah. right. or, or they're tucked away recording them. And then it's a, a viral moment and all of that stuff, man. It's they just can't handle it personally, um, you know, because I have to catch myself. I'm a coach, too. And, you know, it's one of those where I'm talking to the kids like as much as I love this, like it doesn't bother me to not be a part of it. Because right. what's gonna happen is you're gonna respect me and listen right. to me. Otherwise, you're gonna have a rough go at it. <laughs> and it's not just here, it's just in life in general. But if you don't learn, you know, the basic premise of that, then you're gonna struggle going forward, you know, uh, for a lot of these kids. But yeah, I just think now in this generation, you, you can't, you know, um, there's a select few kids that can, more impoverished kids that can deal with kind of the hard nose in your face coaching, but a lot of these kids, no, sir. There's no way. <laughs> no, that's yeah, a great call, opinion. social media. It's changed the game. You know, you think about it, where we really caught wind of Coach Knight. You, you always heard stories growing up. You know, you kind of heard fiery temper. You see him throwing a chair across the, the court. But when uh, he had that incident with Neil Reed, that was caught on camera. And then all of a sudden, it was all yeah. over the news. You mm -hmm. couldn't get away from it. Yeah. And then you realized, oh, there's some, there is something going on here. Yeah, yeah uh, but like, like Brent said, like it, it's, you know, me too. Like I've been coaching my oldest son. He's he graduated in 2016, so pretty much since 2015, 2016, and you know every stop, high school, AU, and all of that that I've been coach, coaching in, it I hadn't gotten a dime for it. <laughs> so you know it's totally yeah. it's totally volunteer. <laughs> So mm -hmm. like 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 he said, you know, you're either going to respect me and I'm trying to instill in you so you don't make the mistakes that I made, but at the same time you got to understand like you know where they where how to deal with them because, you know, it's it's such a a shutdown culture. You know, I, I remember I remember Stevie Johnson saying <laughs> I I remember Stevie Johnson saying to me a few times because you know, Larry, Larry was intense. He was fiery, and he got on me the most because, you know, he wanted to see how I was going to respond and how I responded was going to reverberate down through the rest of the team. So he always got on me the most. I mean, for anything, you know, if the other team turned over the ball, he was like, "Damn it, Pfizer!" I'm like, "Man, what this? Like, I blocked the shot. You know, you get on me for blocking the shot. Like that's what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, yeah. so so whenever he got on me and he was fiery like that, I used to just I used to just look at him and you know, not say anything. And Stevie Stevie was like, man, man, you just when, when Larry be on, you just look at just let just be staring through him. I was like, well, first of all, it's not like he's gonna beat my ass or anything like that. So we're not gonna get right. there. I'm just you know right. I'm just here, you know, yeah. just listening to what he's going to say, you know, because I know what he's doing. And I know he's trying to get us to go. So that 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 wasn't nothing that because he wasn't that type of coach. He wasn't throwing anything at you, anything like that. He wasn't, you know, he was just getting on you to be better. And I understood that. And and the kids who understand that, the players that understood and understand that, know it's not personal. It's just trying to get the best out of you. But we're at a time like now, you know, coaches want to be their friends and you know, want you know, want want to take like once I, I I'm trying to get these kids education paid for. You know, that's the first step. If we can get to the next level from there, then you know that's great, and we continue on. But you know that cycle just repeats itself for me, and just just trying to help instill in them. Like I said, you know, a, a couple my my school is playing right now, or was playing right now, and you know, a couple the ex alumni is playing. My favorite sport in football and i'm sitting up here watching you know one of my ex-players you know so it's the sacrifice that i that i make for the guys that the kids that i've instilled and try to help them along because you know if, if i feel like they have pro potential or just to maximize where they are at in college you know that's that's my goal as you know the volunteer coach that i've been for the last <laughs> almost 10 years well, it's also about spending time with your sons too. You know, that's you don't get that right. time back. So while yeah. you're not paid, in a way, you're paid because of the opportunity to to spend time with them. So yeah. that's a good thing. You know, something I tell you know, I, I kind of tell my son this 
tell my son this too. There's a couple of things. One is, you know, you have to be super self-aware. So like being able to be your own worst critic, but understanding your mistakes right now. Right. So you talk about going to, to play professional ball or, or ball at a higher level. It's all a matter of detail. I know Marcus, you can speak to that too. It's, it's the smallest things that you do or that you have to correct to, to be consistent. And then it's no longer an issue. Right. So it's, you know, we talk a lot about that, like being able to, okay, you know what, man, I took a false step on this one. Like looking at yourself on film, break yourself down, see where you can improve that way. When the coaches come at you and that film session, it's not a, it's not a bash fest. Cause you're like, yep, I've been here. Okay. You take it, you take what they tell you and you keep it pushing. And then the other part of it is when the coach stop coaching you, they really don't care about you anymore. At that point, they know you're not receiving the message right. and they're not getting through to you anymore. And so you're kind of a lost cause. So take all of that coaching because it's a it's a blessing to get that right. A lot of these guys have a lot of good knowledge and they got some good information to pass down. You take what you can use and let the other go. Yeah. Well, listen to the message. What is being said? Not necessarily how it's being right. said. Yeah. 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 So women's basketball, uh, they played today, earlier today, 11 o'clock, their first game of the season. They came out and won 82 to 55. Uh, they shot 42% from three-point range. Looks like Twister Sisters are back in action. This is fun. This is shaping up to be a fun team as well. Don't know if any of you guys were had a chance to catch that game, but um, their next game is Sunday against Drake in Des Moines. They played at 11 this morning? <laughs> Yeah, That's it was uh, a special a special game. And so I think uh, a lot of the kids in Central Iowa had the day off. And so I think okay. Kelly Coliseum was rocking today with gotcha, a lot gotcha. of junior high and, and high school kids that uh, families were able to go up. Fortunately, I had to work, so yeah. did not have the opportunity to do that. So this is the 50th uh, season of women's basketball. So those that are watching and listening, if you have a chance to get up there, Iowa State women are usually top – three top five in attendance i think that they're like 10 out of the last 11 seasons are they're in the top 10 in the, in the nation for attendance so they've got a pretty good product built, you know bill Fenelay has just uh, done a phenomenal job with that program and uh, i think this year's team shaping up to be quite quite the good uh, freshman crop of, of players that are going to be up there fortunately we lost to uh, emily ryan um kind of read between the lines earlier this summer it sounded like uh there's some health issues that are going on. So we certainly wish her the best and hope to see her back on the court. Um, if uh, those are able to resolve themselves. Um, and then Absolutely. for some reason, we always end up in with wrestling, but uh, did, did you see where the first wrestling match of the year was over the weekend? Mm-mm. No. So Iowa state, uh, wrestled back in Ohio at David Carr's high school gym. David Carr? Yes. Really? Yes. I thought that exactly. was sort of a – that was really a, a neat thing. What – we're seeing some of this. You, you go back to high school. A, a couple of years ago, there was a basketball game that was played on um, a, an aircraft carrier – uh, we saw the Iowa women play in Kinnick Stadium an exp- exhibition game. Have you have you played on any sort of odd locations or weird service uh, surfaces uh, in your careers that you thought, oh, I never thought I'd see this happen? I played in the Alamo Dome. <laughs> you know, down, yeah. Uh, but yeah. the Spurs, but I mean, that place is huge. Like, you know, yeah. we you drive the bus up into because you know it's a football dome, and so they yeah. they used to cut off you know the sides, whatever with curtains and stuff like that, and and, and so for a place that big, the depth perception is weird. I mean, if you're yeah. playing there and that's your home court, then you're used to it, and and I, I attribute a lot, a lot of the Spurs wins <laughs> and championships in there to that, but because the depth perception is so weird, but that's probably the biggest place. You know, I played in or uh, we were in the NCAA tournament. We played up in the Dome in uh, uh, Minnesota, too. So that, well, that's up to Detroit. I never, yeah, I never played on like an air, aircraft carrier or anything like that. 
I mm-hmm. I got to equate that to like playing on the on a cruise. I got to hoop on a cruise once. I was about it. Did you? It was, it was really. Unique. It was very unique, but n- nothing. It was not professional. We were just out there shooting around. That was totally different. But it was still any, unique. Did you have any netting what? around? For yeah, yeah, yeah. Ball? Yep, they had a, they had a ton of nets uh, around the side, but it was just you know for me it was just super weird. I, already was on the water and you know like mark is like i'm on a vessel so i'm okay it's like a hotel that was that was moving but just to to just literally look over and i could see the water like that net didn't i just made sure i stayed on the other side of the court <laughs> it didn't sit right with me it's like probably put up a couple of shots like yeah it's it's time to get on out of here i think i've had enough just wanted to say i did it well, that sounds like a great way to end, guys. It's been fun. Uh, looking forward to more Cyclone Talk. Looking forward to the weekend game against BYU. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Um, as we close the show out, any last words? I've got nothing. Looking forward to this win. Looking, looking forward to this win. Like you said, you know, that's our, that'll be our sixth win. So um, getting that win, being bowl eligible, continue to, you know, fight through the rest of the season and – you know, see what happens. Um, and for the rest of the week, me, for me, just you know, watching all these sports that's that's colliding into each other and trying to figure out which one to watch, which one to record, <laughs> and, and all of that. That's it. Well, I know which one I'll be watching. I'll have two picks in my eyes to make sure I, I make it to the end. Guys, we will see you next week, and that's another edition of In the Side of the Storm. Have a that's great good. night, everyone. <laughs>